Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Alazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com. And today, we'll do the August review for the medical device companies. And we'll start with the UDI, then we'll go through the cardiac implantable uh, electronic devices. Then we'll talk about the rolling plan, which is something that um, is really important because it's telling mainly about what is happening within the UMDR and IVDR. Um, we'll go through the green belt certificate. We'll go through the new guidances, MDCG, and also new standards. And finally, we'll go through uh, all what happened within the easy medical device uh, world. Okay, I wanted to start today with UDI. So UDI, as you know, is something quite new for manufacturers that are not selling their products to uh, to the US. And it's something that will happen uh, for all medical devices by 26th of May 2021. Mainly by this date, everybody should have a UDI, but their implementation or the UDI carrier can be provided on the products a bit later. Depends on the class of your products. And to help the medical device community, the EU Commission issued an UDI frequently asked question. So this is a document that is providing a lot of information regarding to uh, when you should place a UDI on the products, who should do that, etc, etc. So um, if you want to go uh, through this document and try to see if there is maybe um, some question that could be interesting for you, so you can go just to the show notes of this episode and you'll get all the links of what we'll talk today. Okay, let's talk now about cardiac implantable uh, electronic devices. So this is uh, called CIED uh, and the EU Commission issued a guidance for vigilance system um, reporting. Uh, mainly this guidance is helping you if you have this type of devices, uh, helping you to define when an incident should be reportable or not. Uh, not not, but when it should be reportable mainly. Um, so there is there, so three columns mainly where there are talking specific about the incidents reported uh, individually. So here we are talking about death or for example, prolonged uh, asystole. Uh, there is incidents that are included in a periodic summary report with the frequency. So it tells you at which frequency you have to submit this report. Uh, for example, we have premature uh, battery depletion. We have remote monitoring issues. Uh, and we have the last one, which is incident with a statistically significant increase, which means that if you have maybe one event, it's not a problem. But if it starts to be significantly high, higher than before, if I can say, then you maybe have to report it. And it tells you also uh, which types of devices or which type of incidents that are happening there, like electrode displacement. But you have to read this guidance uh, for this type of products with the MedDev guidance. So the MedDev 2.12 uh, slash 1, which is my guidance regarding vigilance uh, reporting, vigilance system. Um, you cannot just use this guidance. You have to use also the MedDev for that. Okay, now let's talk about the rolling plan. So the famous rolling plan for the EUMDR and EUIVDR. Um, this month on the rolling plan or on the news, what we have is the fact that there was the announcement of the UDAMED Actor module that will be available uh, by December 1st, 2020. It's alive, it's moving. It's alive. Oh, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. So it means that um, every manufacturer, importer, um, uh, authorized representative uh, can then start to register their company within this, the UDAMED platform uh, and get their SRN number. So this is something that we advise you to do early. So even as soon as it's starting, so maybe it's great to do that um, because there is maybe some companies will wait until maybe 2022 because this is the official date of the release of the full modules. But uh, you have really to train yourself and to start to place some information about your company there um, so that you are also ready in case also of a vigilance reporting because as soon as there is a vigilance reporting, your company should be registered before you can uh, submit any vigilance reporting also. So um, this is the first element regarding the UDAMED uh, database. Uh, so we'll see in December how it will be working. We'll see how the information should be, uh, should be uh, transferred then. Um, then on the rolling plan, there is a second element that was mentioned, which was about the reprocessing of single use devices. So um, this is something that was mentioned also on the UMDR. So mainly in article uh, 17, 
uh, where uh, there is an explanation about the fact that it's possible to reprocess single-use devices, but there should be more information about that. So the EU released the regulation uh, 2020-1207, which is a regulation uh, explaining uh, or the implementing act explaining how the health institution should do that because it's mainly for health institution that are maybe using those products and want to reprocess them so they can do that or they can subcontract that to a third party so um, this is really an important read if i can say if you want really to understand if you are the manufacturer of some single-use devices to know that some countries can authorize there are in health institutions to uh, reprocess your single use device. So uh, we decided to um, see how this will happen uh, within a health institution. So here is a clip that will tell you. Three, three surgeries. We have only two single use kits. So you want me to pay for a third kit that will cost 1000 euros? No hey guys, we don't have the budget for that. Hey. Didn't I told you? Only money. He was talking only about money. This is what is interesting for him. Money, money. But then there is a solution. You can do thousands of surgeries without paying a kit. What are you saying? Recently, our country is authorizing the reprocessing of single-use devices. So if you can prove it, then this will work. So prove it. So you'll pay for doing a study? Is that? Yes, exactly. And then you can do surgery. But the manufacturer says it is single use. This would be against IFU. No, it's not. It is authorized. You make a study and you confirm how much time this can be reprocessed. Wait a minute. This is crazy. You are not ready to pay for an extra kit, but you are ready to pay for a study? But if the study works, there will be a lot of benefits and we will not buy a kit anymore. But we need it. Now, you want to help the patient? This is how. We are really doing this study to avoid to pay for one kit for one patient. Guys, we'll pay now for a better future. We'll see the benefits really later. Are you out of your mind? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is maybe an assumption of how this can work, but we'll see it in the real life. Okay, now we will go through the Green Bell Certificate. So we just closed the third session of the Green Bell Certificate. Uh, so it was really a, a great session with a lot of um, students, a lot of questions, which was really important. Now they have to go through the exam. I hope they will uh, they will really get it because it's really an important achievement for, for, for them. So this month, so in the month of September, we'll have a, a new element within the Green Belt is the fact that we have used you we have normally the green belt in english and we'll have now the the green belt also in french so we'll have two sessions one in french and one in english and we are also working with the arpa which is the asian Re regulatory professionals association for an, uh, another uh, course regarding umdr for the asia countries so we are also working on them and you will hear about that soon so for the registration of the, the course in september this will be open um, in a few days, so um, I really ask you to go to the, the page of school.easymedicaldevice.com uh, shop so that you can go and see uh, if there is um, any, um, any, um, any course available for that date, for the date of September. Okay, now we go through the notified bodies. So what happened? for the notified bodies. Uh, this month in August, there was one notified body, so DQS, that was appointed for EUMDR. So this is only one, if I can say, so it's not really a lot. But now we have for EUMDR 16 notified bodies that are appointed. I mean, 15 if we don't talk about BSI UK that will be um, that will not exist uh, anymore as a notified body by uh, due to the Brexit. And uh, for the IVDR, we have four notified bodies or three if we exclude also uh, BSI UK. So this number is really low. Um, if you remember, we're expecting around 20 notified bodies by December for uh, to be, if I can say, on track. Now we are um, 20 
if I can say, for MDR and IVDR. But uh, we are al already in August, so it's nearly nine months later. So it's something that is a bit a bit a problem for uh, manufacturers that uh, will try to uh, register their products within the, the, um, the market. So we will have to really um, put in place a strategy within some medical device companies so that they are not too late. Uh, also strategies for IVDR companies that have really to take the engagement to really um, transfer all their products to the IVDR so that they can be ready also for, for IVDR. There is also a lot of information also about IVDR. We try to get uh, now more feedback about what is happening and how we can also help uh, the medical device community to transition uh, to, this, uh, to this regulation because I think it's really important. Okay, now let's go to the guidances and standards. So first, there is a new standard that was issued, which is the ISO 14155 uh, version 2020, which is the clinical investigation of medical devices for human subjects. So uh, this standard was existing before, but now it was it is uh, renewed. Uh, and there is a lot of changes on this standard. I will not sh tell you everything, uh, but for example, there is some emphasis of the need of a clinical evaluation plan, a risk management plan, or biological evaluation plan. There is also some important things saying that the sponsor should have some access to uh, medical expertise relevant to this uh, the clinical investigation is working on. There is also the inclusion of the clause 4 of the GCP which is about the fact that uh, rights, safety and well-being of human subjects uh, are the most important uh, and that, this, that should prevail over the interest of uh, science and society. So mainly saying that uh, you will not make some clinical investigation without really having uh, impact if you are really impacting the human life, uh, human beings. So this is also something important, which is written now. Uh, also the fact that when you are starting a clinical investigation, you have to uh, register, enter your information in a publicly uh, accessible database. Uh, for for example, for the US, it would be clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, for the EU, it would be UDAMED. Uh, so this is a lot of things that are change so you can you can see that also in a linkedin post that i i uh, discovered from ellen equi so we had ellen equi on the podcast ellen equi uh, from qmed consulting so i will put this uh, the link for the linkedin post uh, in the show notes so that you can go and also check uh, what are the other changes that, uh, changes that are happening uh, within this iso standard and i think it's really important for you and if you are doing clinical investigation this is also something that you have to to look at the other changes is about the MDCG. So MDCG issued two guidances. The first one is the 2020-14, uh, which is the use of the MDSAP report under MDR. Um, this is um, a document that is telling you when you can use some MDSAP uh, elements for an MDR certification. So uh, to avoid, if I can say, to recheck something that was already checked uh, within the, um, the MDSAP uh, audit. Uh, so it gives a guidance uh, on the, in all those information, it it helps you also to um, to avoid, if I can say, as I've said, to audit. But this is authorized only when it's not a first certification, not an initial certification. You cannot do that when it's an initial certification. So it's something also that uh, that is uh, important. You cannot use that also during an unannounced audit. I mean, for an unannounced audit, um, because an unannounced audit is mainly checking what is happening really in production. Uh, so you cannot use the fact that there is an MDSAP report to say, no, I will not look at this or not look at that also. Um, there is also in this MDCG guidance a table that is making an equivalence between MDSAP and MDR, saying um, this information from um, MDR can be found in this place for MDSAP, etc., etc. So it's helping you really, it's guiding you really to to know what are the information that you can use and what what you cannot use uh, also. So uh, if you have an MDSAP report, if you have already a uh, first initial MDR certification, so you can now also see if there is a possibility to use some element of this report for your uh, MDR audit or surveillance audit or recertification. The second MDCG report is the 2020-15 and it's the one we talked uh, before on the rolling plan. I mean, it's linked to the one talked before on the rolling plan, which is about the UDAMED actor registration module. So it's telling you more um, how this is working, when it will be available, how you can use the information, uh, who should register, etc., etc. So this is something that is, uh, that is uh, uh, important for you to understand so that when the UDAMED module will be ready, you know already what, what to put in place there. Okay, now 
let's go through the easy medical device. So what happens uh, within the podcast? So in the podcast, we had first episode 88, where we talked about IEC 6601, which is a famous um, series of standards with Leo Eisner. So we had really a clear overview of the different elements, if I can say that there is on this series, uh, what is, what, how you can use that, what is really important, what is really sp special for, for manufacturers, um, the risk assessment also that you have to do before maybe to choose which standard to go for, etc., etc. So, uh, if you want to have a better understanding of the IEC 6601, this episode is really interesting, uh, will be really interesting for you. Then we have the um, episode 89, which is about the best practices for testing. So I had with me uh, Michael Weatherington, uh, who helped me really to understand what, how can you, I mean, when you are making a, a development of a product, uh, you have to test maybe some, your, uh, some, some of the elements of your product. So how should you go through those tests? Can you do that internally? Can you do that with the lab? which lab also to select for doing this test. So there is a lot of things that you have to consider before going through uh, this type of, of element. So in this episode, episode 88, you will have a lot of uh, information, some tips, uh, some traps also that you can go through. So I think if you are under development of a, a device, uh, you have maybe to listen that to that just to uh, be aware of what is uh, what can happen also. And the last episode is episode 90 with uh, Topra. So we discussed with Topra about the virtual conferences because Topra uh, has the Topra Symposium, which is normally a, a live event, if I can say, where we are seeing people face to face. Uh, but now they will convert that or transition that to a virtual event because of the actual situation with the pandemic. So there is not a possibility for a lot of people to, to join just to the fact that a crowded place can, um, can uh, help, if I can say, to transmit or uh, to provide uh, the virus uh, to other people. So it will be a really, uh, a really bad situation. So it's why now they converted that to a virtual conference. And um, we discussed during this episode about how the participants, how the speaker, how the exhibitors can feel the same, if I can say the same enthusiasm uh, when you are at a virtual conference than also at a face-to-face at -to -face, uh, conference. So how they can get the same feeling or how they can get the same benefits uh, going through that. And so I really um, ask you to go maybe to the program of uh, Topra. So you can go to the, the page Topra Symposium uh, webpage where you can see specifically what is available, who will be speaking. I will have some of the speakers on the podcast so that we can also uh, discuss about maybe uh, some information that they can share uh, during the, the Topra, Topra Symposium. So don't hesitate to go to the Topra web, uh, webpage uh, so that you can get more information about that. Um, in terms of the um, uh, LinkedIn Live, so uh, this summer we didn't have a lot because mainly people uh, were on holiday. So uh, this was a bit difficult for, for arranging some, some people to, to join and to have uh, the possibility to do that. But we'll try to have other, uh, other sessions of LinkedIn Live. If you have any idea or any elements that you think, oh, it would be great to have discuss about that and maybe here is also a speaker that can uh, be part of, of this. So let me know and I will try to invite the person and then we can make a LinkedIn Live or a podcast also together. Okay, this is the end of this uh, podcast episode. I uh, really thank you for participating to it. Uh, don't forget, if you are really interested to learn about uh, UMDR, uh, you can participate to the Green Belt Certificate. And as I've said, uh, this month in September, we'll have two versions. We have the French version uh, for French-speaking uh, regions, and uh, we have the English version as usual. So it will be the fourth version for the fourth edition for the, for the English-speaking uh, uh, one. Okay, so really thank you, and I wish you a nice day.